Now, if you could make any animal on the planet into a sentient being for the sole purpose of adding another race of people in order to add diversity in our ever-growing culture, what animal would you want? For me, it's pretty obvious, but really. Considering how many fictional stories tend to use them alongside us, I always wondered what would happen if such a thing happened for real. Even if it's just our imagination, it's not impossible. What with science allowing us to view galaxies beyond our own, we are bound to find other intelligent life, not to mention create our own. Where am I going with this? Why, Theodore Rex. Now, I know what you're thinking, and I agree. This is a really bad movie. Hell, it's one that Whoopi Goldberg even tried getting out of, to the point where Richard Abranson, producer of the movie, filed a lawsuit against her just to keep her in. But you know, as dumb as the concept may sound, I want to see where this goes. I want to see how much fail this could have and still have fun with it. Why, it's like seeing how Kubo screws up the Nazi Quincy idea. It's so out there that it's a must-see. So let's head into the future once again and see what kind of fail we can poke fun of. Unnecessary spoiler text. But anyway, we open with old school horror vision as we see Tommy Wiseau about to murder a dinosaur. <laughs> He kinda does, I mean, with that haircut, he... Look, just let me have my fun. Present from Mr. Cave. <laughs> By the way, that butterfly is very explosive. Isn't that funny, Oliver? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha so whatever that was, we're now introduced to our title character, Theodore, voiced by George Newbern. He's a cop who works in public relations in a future world where dinosaurs are now people. Before you ask how, well, it's explained that in the future, almost all the animals have gone extinct and an organization called New Eden is reviving them through cloning. Though that doesn't explain how there are Jim Henson's dinosaurs rejects running around. Oh, and you gotta love the lip syncing they have sometimes. Hey, freshen up here, Teddy. Here we go. Teddy's going out. Yes, the Museum of Natural History, of course. We're off. Wait, let's watch the lip sync, okay? Ah, thank you. Either way, they're setting up the interracial discrimination theme in which Theodore wants to become a detective, but can't because of who and what he is. Also, his running gag is that he loves cookies. Cookie! I don't know about the rest of you, but I'd be willing to invest in cookie launchers. So after an awkward zoom out with average 90s CGI, we meet our other main character named Katie, played by Whoopi Goldberg, a tough-as-nails cop who was just reinstated and is now trying to stop Zapheads from murdering this guy. <laughs> or, well... Now she has to stop them from stealing the body. Speaking of zap heads, I really don't know what to make of them. They seem to be mutants? Freaks? I don't know. No idea what to say except they're over the top and kind of funny. Are you collecting for the policeman's ball? <laughs> humor! Humor! You've been observed. You've been seen, spotted, caught, committing a crime. So you're under arrest. 
She's the best, people. Best at playing it hard and failing. <laughs> Oh, yeah! Hey! These were not engine scavengers. Body hunters? Probably. DNA encrypted clone. ID unknown. Serial number unknown. As if he didn't exist. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense. Considering that was Noon or Sadi, I'd bet he was an expendable character. At the same time, Teddy arrives at the crime scene of the Dinocide. Or as it turns out, it seems dinosaurs are mentally connected in a way that they kinda see what goes on between each other. It's a plot point that's not explored all too well and ultimately doesn't affect the outcome of the plot. Still, Teddy decides to see Commissioner Lynch, who is currently at a fundraiser, to try and take on the case. And speaking of plot points that don't affect the plot a lot, we meet Sebastian, a little kid that Katie seems to know well, who's trying to get her to hook up with his dad, who we only ever see once. Can you swing by the playground tomorrow? It's a surprise. I'm not real good with surprises. Oh, Katie. All right. I'll try. Katie. I'll be there if I can. Tomorrow. I try really hard. Okay. Now I get that he's meant to show us that Katie isn't all about herself and that she has at least one person she cares for, but the movie doesn't go out of its way to really develop them a whole lot. Like, only a small portion of this film involves developing these two, and as far as his dad is concerned, it pretty much goes nowhere. So at the fundraiser, we see Teddy causing some slight slapstick before meeting with Lynch himself. We're also introduced to Eliza Kane, founder of New Eden. Apparently, he created Teddy, as well as the other dinosaurs in this movie, because... To show how science could change the world, and I did. Oh, please. What people really want are talking ponies. So Teddy tries to convince Lynch to let him have the assignment for once, since he's pretty much just a publicity stunt to show that dinosaurs can have equal rights like humans. But overhearing about the dinocide, Alex Summers here tries to support the idea. Also cookies. Now our, uh, our tall and shiny reptile freak over there, yeah. he could be the key. We could make him our first dino detective. What? Just, Are you out of your mind? Just track with me this year. Look, Teddy solves the dinosaur. Interspecies relations are smoothed over. Who's the hero? Teddy Rex. No, Lynch. The commissioner who had the vision to look beyond species to tame our town. Did I mention I'm not a villain? So Lynch assigns Teddy the case and is naturally happy for it. Hey, it's scraping the barrel, but I can take any slapstick I can find. They assign Katie to be his partner, and she's oddly confused. He's a dinosaur. Come on, Coltrane. He graduated from the academy just like you did. He's a dinosaur. You're not a species, are you? <laughs> Give me results by prime time tomorrow, and I'll double your regular commissions. He's a dinosaur. Katie, you're in a future with talking anthropomorphic animals. This isn't the 1960s or the 21st century. You should be used to this by now. He's a dinosaur! Maybe it's just shock that she's in this movie. Oh, and looky here. Alex is evil. Apparently, the dinosaur they killed earlier, Oliver, was going to spoil their evil plans involving their arc. But considering that Alex personally made sure both Teddy and Katie investigate this, even if their chemistry might cause them to fail, he might have just ruined any and all hope for their plans to come through. This is from Adam. Etch. You do realize the missile launch is midnight tomorrow. That's your problem. There's no leeway. All right, don't get your niggers in the twist. My people are working on it. Don't call Zapet's people. They belong in cages. Racism! Cool! <laughs> what do you want me to do? Just have them followed. I don't want anyone to sense our concern. Now you're the one making a mistake. 
those zap heads you hired aren't exactly great for spy work, and if they get involved, Teddy and Katie might try to follow up on them. You're speeding up your own demise, and it's only the day before the finale! Now, as with most buddy cop films, both characters have conflicting personalities that slowly and surely change to where they develop more efficiently and where they both end up working together. In the meantime, accidents from the more immature character tend to annoy the more mature one. This makes up most of the comedy of the film, but also the most character development. Considering Katie is a human and Teddy is a dinosaur, I'm curious to see how they take this all into account. Another sign of racial inequality. Dead dinosaurs are taken to museums to have autopsies performed on them rather than a hospital. Hate to imagine what it would have been like for other animals. What now? I mean, look at this. You know, it just makes me wonder. I mean, these bones have so many untold stories. If dinos weren't extinct, uh, We'd be running the world, and you soft skins would be fossils. Hmm. It's too fast. No! You're driving too fast. I don't like it when it's too fast. No! Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. It's been three long years. Do <sighs> you still want me? It wouldn't be that much different. Doctor, may I? Help yourself. Thank you. May you what? Yes. Yes. Ah. What? There you go. Oh, I recreated dinosaurs to show how science could change the world, and I did. Must be a dinosaur thing. After getting a tail print of Oliver, they get a lead on where he was living and with who, heading to a nightclub that shows us a good example of multiple sapient species getting along. What's that you say? Some of this is possible bestiality? Viewers, please. Not in this future world. The thing at the table just clacked at me. Oh, that's just Grok. He likes soft skins. <sighs> but that's still creepy. In the human sense. I thought you people, you know, ate meat. Um, I'm kind of on a wagon. You know, it's not like the old days, Katie, with the herds of duckbills roaming through the plain. This is kind of a problem I have with them making dinosaurs the first to be people. If they still retain some of their natural instincts of eating other animals, wouldn't that endanger other people? Well, then again, I guess it's just another form of murder, but I don't know. Something just bugs me whenever a society that has power to control what they clone still has such issues. At any rate, we meet Theodore Rex's love interest, Molly Rex. No relation. Come on, let me cling on, feel like a vine. Make that low down music trickle up your spine. Baby, I could warm you with this heart of mine. Um. Yeah, something is definitely wrong with this, in a funny way. You know what it needs? Hey! So after that, they go to Molly's room to ask her a few questions regarding Oliver, while Teddy is being infatuated by her. I mean, uh, I feel for you. What exactly was he? He was an entertainer. Oh? A song and dance, I know. Did he have any hobbies? You know, outside interests. He looked at New Eden, it was in his heart to heal the earth. New Eden? And with that, Kane's plans just went down the toilet. All they need to do is go see him at New Eden, and they're set. 